Rita! Rita! Ooh. <clears throat> I, I, I do apologise, Miss Parker. I'm somewhat tardy. I, I, I seem to be at least, ooh, 26 minutes late. I do apologise. Now, uh, let, let us waste no more time and, uh, and get on with it, shall we? Uh, let me just check my nib. Yes, there we are. Right, I have my notes. Mm -hmm. uh, so what are we doing today? <laughs> we are doing The Mind of Mr. J.G. Reader. Starring Hugh Channing. Hugh Channing? <laughs> Hugh Channing. <laughs> Hugh Burden. At least you didn't say Hugh Janus. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh Burden. Hugh Burden as Mr. Reader. As Mr. Reader. He's also Channing in Spear Heaven Spice. Now, a lot of people watching this might mm. well say, what on earth is the mind of Mr. J.G. Reader? Because I would have done a few yes. years ago. Yes. It's, um, a, well, it's a series from 1969 and 1971 mm -hmm. starring... Uh, Hugh Burden as Mr. J.G. Reader, yes. and he works in the Department of Pro Public Prosecutions. Now, you, you were doing an impression at the start. I was doing a, a very bad impress impression of Sir Jason. Who's Sir Jason? He's then? the pro public prosecutor. Well, Willoughby Goddard. Willoughby Goddard, he's very fat. So he's got a huge he's got waistcoat. A huge, <laughs> very belly. strained waistcoat. And I was doing Mr. Reader. You were doing Mr. Reader, who's quite Because Mr. Reader is never late. No. Apart from in the episode we watched. Yes. He was some 26 minutes late. Because he's, cause he's housekeeper. Didn't wake him up on time. Didn't rouse him. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, what do we like about this show? It's um, it's really quite odd, isn't it? It's a bit it? odd, yes. Yeah. It's another one of these Thames things from the sort of late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. And it's based on stories by Ed, Edgar Wallace. Um, We've got well, the books. We have got the books the book. somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's more than well, one. Actually, there's more than there's one more book, one. yeah. And, um, yeah, he's... He's got, as he says, I have a criminal mind. Yes. Which means that he can think the way criminals do. He sees the evil in everything. He does, yes. Now, episode one, mm. The Treasure Hunt, is from the 23rd of April, 1969. Yeah. And the one we watched today is The Poetical Policeman, mm -hmm. from the 28th of May, 1969. Yes. So the last episode in 69, which guest stars John Le Measurer, mm -hmm is 11th of June yeah. and the series starts up again on the 19th of October 1971 mm -hmm. so Spearhead from Space falls bang almost exactly bang in the middle of yeah. it doesn't it yeah. so as the final episodes of season one are transmitted mm -hmm. um, it's just a few months before Spearhead starts filming yes so yes, yes. Ooh, I've, I've, I've got myself caught in the box <laughs> ah can you open it thank you there we go but for this one, yes. let's just briefly go through mm -hmm. through the plot. So we start outside. Mm -hmm. uh, series one is all in black and white. Yes. Series two, there's a couple that survive in colour, yes. but again, mostly black and white copies. Um, it's even got the old Thames logo, it isn't has, it? Yeah. You know, it's, it's really, and it's got a very silly theme tune. It has. Which is ding 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 ding. It's set in the twenties. Oh, oh, lots of the ladies in it are sort of very. Flappers. 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 And he's got a succession of secretaries, none of which last, and all of which are awful. <laughs> and the we very weird psychedelic title sequence, yes. even in black and yes. white. It works brilliantly in colour, yeah. but yeah, it does work in black and white. You've got all like sort of concentric black and white patterns, because mm. um, it is actually sort of a shot of his head, isn't yes. it? And all the thoughts yes. that go on yeah. in his, on his head. And there's a dancing lady in there as yeah. well. Yeah, um, but it starts with a policeman doing his patrol outside yes. the bank. Yeah, I spent most of that sequence trying to work out if it was day for night filming because the buildings were very light. Well, it looks but dark, the, the, but the, yeah, the sky I, I seemed to be black. Out, no. But because it was in black and white, it really helped because it you couldn't tell. But who's the policeman? It's Paul Shelley playing Constable Constable Burnett. Yes. Ninety-one. And he's That's his number on his collar. And there's somebody that he spots just outside the bank. That's the bank he? lurking, yes. But then he notices a horseshoe. Yes, doesn't he kicks he? a horseshoe. Mm. And then he goes and gets some. He picks some flowers. You say gets, I say steals. Steals some, licks some yeah. flowers, and he starts writing in his book, doesn't yes, he? Yes, in his notebook, he, he writes a, something, and he ties that to the horseshoe with flowers and throws it onto somebody's windowsill. Yeah. But um, later on, the policeman goes in the bank, doesn't he? He does. Um, yeah. And he finds a body, mm. which has got sort of like it's sort of flannel or something on his yes. head. 
And there's a there's a can dripping mm. what turns out to be chloroform, chloroform on, yeah. onto it, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, the policeman uh, realizes that this, it's too late to save whoever mm -hmm. this is. Yeah. And he picks up his candlestick phone. And he Not has, his candlestick. Well, phone. the candlestick phone in the bank, and yeah. says that the night watchman is done for. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so yes. Um, then we then we cut to. Was it the manager of the bank mm -hmm. um, who's going away for a holiday? Yes, he's in his house and he's got a suitcase. Now, bearing in mind this is midnight, yeah, it's a little bit suspicious. And the policeman sort of he knocks on the door. Oh, hello. Rose is here. Here. here comes Rose. Come along, Rose. You come and sit with me. There we go. But then, then we cut to Mr. Reader in bed, don't mm. we? And you yeah. don't really see, you don't see much of his home life no, all the time no, do you because i wasn't sure if if miss because mrs hoochin she's mm. if she's his housekeeper or his landlady but she says in her reference yeah so she must be his housekeeper yeah and she yeah she, she's a very formidable scottish she's lady a isn't very she? and she feeds him awful food yeah she brings she a, really doesn't like she brings him a cup of tea and yeah. bellows good morning at yes him. yeah and uh, he he was late last night. He yes. was late in eleven o'clock. Eleven o'clock, yes, dreadful. She was going to give him cocoa and a Garibaldi, wasn't mm -hmm. she? Um, but apparently, he went to the cinema. He did to see Tom Mix to, to and see his horse. to see Thomas Mix. Thomas Mix, sorry. Thomas and Mix horse. and his wonder horse. Mm. Tom, Tom Tom Mix being from, uh, from the gunfighters. Gun Why did you get? Dress yourself up like Tom Mix. It's, I don't it's, know. It's a circus. S says um, says um, Hartnell. Yeah. Yeah. I thought she used to do with Bar P. T. Barnum more I don't know. a bit later, um, yeah. But um Mrs. Hoochin is gonna make him a man's breakfast. A man's breakfast, yeah. You can imagine like this is gonna be like piled high yes. with he, he sort of visibly winces at the thought and of that. That's the thing, I identify with Mr. Reader in lots of ways. Mm. And one of the ways is that the fear of Mrs. Hoochin's breakfast. <laughs> Because when mm. we go, like so I, even like for a hotel, mm. th they're amazed that I'm happy with tea and toast and a bit of yeah. cereal, aren't mm -hmm. they? That, you know. Yeah, I will have a cooked breakfast, but you always just uh, have. I, I avoid those. Like a continental those, like, breakfast, like the, like the plague. Mm. Um, but um, well, he has trouble with his knot and his dressing gown. Yeah, he ties he? his dressing gown a bit hurriedly and then can't untie it. <laughs> Tied it too tight. But yes. Um, so then we see his new secretary. Mm -hmm. uh, who's got a double barreled name yes. and she's very posh and she, she keeps is. talking about daddy and mummy and uncle jason and it turns out uncle jason is a friend of the family is a friend of the family yeah. um so that's that's reader's boss yes and apparently he's very friendly uncle jason isn't yes. it? which sounds a bit dodgy it does sound a little bit dodgy yes. i can almost imagine you don't get the shot can I, but i can imagine yeah. him wanting to, uh, to sit on his, on his knee. knee yeah because uh, there's a bit of giggling later on isn't there yeah. and you wonder what's going on in this and she's office. not very good at typing either no. and he says oh it's all right we've got a pool and then I think she, she she thinks he means a swimming, a swimming pool. pool. He means a typing yeah. pool. Yeah. But um, yeah, Reader is is turned up twenty six minutes late, which, mm -hmm. which so Jason thinks the clocks are wrong. Yes. Although he's a bit sarky about that. He is. And they have a discussion about cricket, don't they? Yes. And Mr. Reader likes the statistical details. Mm -hmm. he likes to read wis wisdom's yeah. almanac. And th that's the thing that Mr. Reader's mind, which is mm -hmm. what the series is about, is. Mm -hmm. Um, absolutely, you know, it's like a steel trap, isn't yes. it? it? It remembers every yeah. single detail, mm -hmm. um, and that that is always helpful in his yes. in, in his yes um, in his dealings. But he, mm -hmm. he talks about how he sees the possibility of evil, and he has a mm -hmm. criminal mind. And there's a um, the manager of the bank's had a blackmail letter, hasn't he? Yes. Well, the manager of the bank has been arrested has for been the arrested robbery for and the, the murder. Robbery. Um, and but Mr. Reader thinks it's too neat. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's it's, let's just read out the, it the ties blurb. Ties up too we? much. Because the blurb yeah. says, um, "The poetical policeman." Here we go. Uh, following a robbery at his branch, in which a night watchman died, bank manager Mr. Green is the obvious suspect. He has a past conviction for embezzlement, held the only key to the bank's strong room, and was found hurriedly leaving with a large suitcase. But somehow Mr. Reader feels the case against him is is too tidy. Mm. So yeah, and that's the thing. It's never as easy as it no. as it seems no. with with Mr. Reader, is it? Um. So there's uh, some talk about the policeman mm -hmm. and. Uh, and the lady he used to write poetry to. Yes. yes. Yeah, because he goes to see the bank manager in jail. Yeah. And he explains that uh, yeah, he'd had a blackmail letter because he'd been previously in prison for fraud. Yeah. 
It was 152 pounds. And some eight shillings, eight shillings and six pence. And, six or eight pence or and again, Mr. Bruce Reader remembers what the amount was yeah. from years yeah. ago. And he's sympathetic to him because he thinks that he, it was a moment of weakness. Yeah. But and also the bank think that he's innocent yeah. as well. So he goes to see him in prison and he explains he's had this blackmail letter and that he was going to leave, but his fiance was yeah. going to follow him at a later time. Yeah. Because she was married to somebody. She was married, but she was waiting for a divorce to, divorce to come through. Come through, yeah, yeah. to finalise. So there's a lot of stuff going on in the background yes. in this one. And you've got to pay attention to yes. all the little plot threads, haven't you? Yes. This, take, these, this series takes no prisoners. No. You, you can't no. have this on in the background. No, no, you? you do have to pay attention to it. You've actually got to... Mm. Yeah watch it and, and take you've it assumes you've almost got a mind like mr reader yeah, doesn't it in some ways yeah or well, we should say as well it, that it's dramatised by hugh burden yeah this, this which is one, why we picked this one to yeah do. this one is yeah is, is is a hugh burden one in in several ways so mm. yes um but yeah he, he comes in you see him back at his office and yeah. he checks his checks nib, his nib. Yeah. i always look out for that yes i always like that yes. um but yeah, the uh, more about Uncle Jason uh, mm-hmm. being friendly, mm-hmm. and uh, his secretary's going to get a cup of coffee, and he points mm-hmm. out that eleven o'clock is the statutory hour. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, but the bank think that Green is telling the truth, mm-hmm. so he's he's going to make further inquiries. Yes. Uh, um, it's also I should say we should say he's been told not to upset Scotland Yard. Yeah. Yeah. Because. They have a cordial relationship with Scotland Yard. But more filming, as mm-hmm. we see a milkman, don't yes. we, with his, his horse with his and horse. cart. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, they've put a decent amount of money into There's this. There's an old car in the background that's only a set dressing. It yeah. never moves. Okay. When, when the milkman moves off, you can see an I old car I didn't even watch that. I was watching, outside. watching um, Hugh Burden. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, it, it, it's, it's lovely mm. background detail that must have cost a penny or two. Yeah, but. I mean, yeah, just to get somebody to walk through the frame with a horse and cart dressed as a milk yeah. just for one shot because yeah. he, he, there's nothing in you don't need him he doesn't help the plot at all Mr Reader starts poking around in the garden he soil does. doesn't he yes. by the rose bush mm-hmm. so yeah a girl answers the door yeah. now, it's never explained who she is no who is she I don't yeah. know is she a relative is she, a, like, is she in Probably. service or yeah. what well I thought she maybe she was the, the woman he'd gone to see was lodging in the house but it seems to be her house yeah yeah, I think that's the only bit I do understand. I love the understand. way the girl shouts up, there's an old gentleman There's an old seeing, gentleman see. He sort of winces at that, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. But he sees the he sees the, the lady in the house. Mm. And, uh, of the house. Of the house. And mm. he, he asks for a photograph of... Uh, Mr Green. Mr Green, mm-hmm. isn't he? Because so he she, confirms she get, the details. She goes off to get one. Mm-hmm. And then he has a poke about in the bookshelf in the waste paper basket. He does. And in the waste paper basket he finds the horseshoe. And a poem. And a poem. Mm-hmm. And one of the books is, is, is a book of German poetry, yes. isn't it? Hmm. And it was given to her by a, a prisoner of war, apparently, wasn't it, as a gift? Yes. So she sends, she sends the girl off to get ten cigarettes, mm-hmm. gives her threepence, mm-hmm. and expects to get change as well. Yeah, yeah. Apart from the fact that, you know, you can spend, send a sort of ten-year-old or whatever she is to buy cigarettes, which obviously you couldn't do these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But in comes Constable Burnett. Yes. Um, he's, he's got his flat cap on. He's in his civvies, isn't he? He's in civvies, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, a, a bit more. Now, they're at home again with Mrs Hoochin. Mm-hmm. And uh, she complains he left most of his breakfast. Yes. <laughs> and she's now made him some sheep's head broth. Yes, yeah, she really does bring him some appalling meals. <laughs> But I love all this. Yeah. I mean, I think she does it because she thinks he needs building up. But yeah. you can see him visibly thinking, "Oh, no, I don't want that." And she yeah. talks about well, she had relatives. Yeah, at well, the police he, force. he asks her because yeah. he says he wants to know because Constable Burnett has got this um, penchant for poetry. He wants yeah. to know because she had two uncles in the constabulary, yeah. and he wants to know if either of them were yeah. um, sort of artistic. Artistic, yes. She talks about her uncle Hector. Yes, and. Uh, what was that rude line about? She his, said she used to his his sit on his lap and play with his mouth. <laughs> I think she means he's like his trunch or something. <laughs> I don't go sure, I don't go sure. Yeah, and then, then you get a lovely reaction shot when he lifts the lid off the yes. broth and has a look inside yes. and, and it, whatever it is you never see. No. But it's clearly horrible. Yes. Then at the police station, 
where there's an old lady who's lost her Clarence. Mm, a dog. <laughs> a dog. Mm-hmm. And the sergeant is Windsor Davies. It's Windsor Davies, yeah. In a very small part. Yes. It's only but the then one he's scene. doing jobbing... Yeah. At this point, he is doing jobbing parts. And she wa- he wants to know whether she's got a licence for Clarence. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, she sort of goes off in a half, doesn't Yes. It? So Mr. Reader, who we should, if we said he's from the public prosecutor, yes. so he's not, a, he can't actually arrest anybody. No, that, no but a, he can pass information on to the yeah, police. So it, uh, mm. he, he's sort of a detective. He's doing yeah. detective work on the side, he really, is. isn't he? Yeah. yeah. That well, he, that's his job yeah. to check stuff to make sure that they don't go ahead with the prosecution that they can't get. Really. And you, you spotted a lady police, didn't you? Yeah, there was it because Constable Burnett. He, he's gone to see Constable Burnett, and he comes down. And Windsor said, yes, they go to the interview room, but yeah. Constable Burnett says, oh, should we go to the canteen and have a cup of coffee? Yeah. So they go to the canteen, and, yeah, there's a, there's a WPC. So this must be late 20s, because you don't start to get yeah. level WPCs. But, yeah, it's, again, it's just a little background detail. A little bit detail. of set dressing, yeah. And that sounds horrible. Not, not set dressing, yeah, but, but scene setting. Yeah, but you wouldn't think... That's the thing. There's no reference made to it. No, she's no, just there. She's there in the shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they were mostly there to deal with children and ladies. Mm. They didn't get to do anything interesting, really. Uh, the lady serving the tea refers to him as Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, yeah. And I love the bit uh, Mr. Reader drinks his drink. Yeah. And he goes, I think I have your coffee. He says, no, sir, that's the tea. That's the tea. <laughs> and he just makes a bit of a face mm. again, doesn't he? But, yeah, the constable's beat every 40 minutes he'd go round. Yes, so every 40 minutes he'd he check would the check bank. the bank. And he would go to the bank window and check with the mm. night watchman that everything was okay but all this business with the, sh- the horseshoe and the flowers mm. and it turns out he did write the poem there yes means there's 10 minutes yeah, he was 10 minutes not, later that has not then been he dealt, normally you know, that is not yeah. normally mm-hmm. would have been taken up so um yeah mrs what's her name the lady uh miss gray isn't it is it yeah. um she's packing her suitcase yes and she says she's going away. Mm-hmm. She's written Mr. Green a letter. Yeah. Explaining. But um, then we start to get the explanations, don't yes. we? As, as Mr. Reader yeah. starts to question her. Yeah. And he's sort of worked it all out by now, hasn't mm-hmm. he, really? Yeah. And it turns out that her husband mm-hmm. um, was the German prisoner of war. Yes. Um, they weren't divorced. The, the money was under the rose bush. Mm hmm. And uh, this was all a setup because he mm-hmm. was the night watchman. Yeah. And the idea was that he w- he'd set this up so that he would be discovered, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. So basically, he stole the money yeah. and the keys, buried the money in the garden, yeah. went back and set up the. Though Harry tied his hair, arms, I don't know. Because yeah. oh, well. he's tied to the chair. Yeah. Don't know. I don't know how that works, unless. I don't, know. don't worry about it. Um, and he sets up the chloroform to drip, knowing that in about ten minutes' time the police, the police will, will come, come along, and not him. see him and rescue him. But obviously, because he's delayed, it was too late. It's too late. Yeah, too much chloroform has. Been and gone so, Mr. Reader says he's not empowered to arrest you, but mm. go to the police yourself. Yes, he will write his report tomorrow, mm-hmm. and if she gives herself up, they might be more lenient. Yes, and mm-hmm. then you just get an outside film sequence where mm-hmm. she just says thank you yeah. and off he toddles up the road yeah. doesn't he yeah. yeah. and then yeah. the music comes in uh-huh. and there we are but I love this show yes it is a great show we, we really should have done it for the podcast yeah. ages ago yeah. we, we meant to do it but again it's almost a series that because I love it so much I, it's I've hard been, to choose I've what episode I've yeah. reluctant to do it on the podcast because I felt we wouldn't do it justice because I could, we could do any single one of yeah. these episodes yeah. well yeah. Almost there anyone. are one or two that are of their time. Yeah. Oh yes. But, but yes. There is the yeah. Michael Bates one, yeah. which maybe will draw a veil over. But mm-hmm. yeah, you, you've got John the Measure. Um, mm-hmm. You've got Colin Baker in work. Yeah, Colin Baker you? in a very early role. Yeah. Looking very young. Um, the Treasure House. Um, the final episode is directed by Wojtek. Wojtek. Yeah. Wojtek. Um, that is an actual person, but it made it amused us tremendously because we could imagine it being like Medibot in Look Around You. Yeah. You, Him being like Medibot. Sure. You've got Trevor Preston involved. Yeah. Um, All your usual Thames. Jonathan Alwyn. Suspects. Or oh, Ray McAnally's in yes, Series he's, 2. He's the Duke. Yeah. He? He's, yeah. A, he's a gangster from, from America and he comes over to this country 
because he inherits the house. And the one person not killing. in this episode is Miss Bellman. Yes, um, who's his lady friend. Who's his lady friend he encounters mm. um, very early on. She's yes. not in the first episode, is she? But, I um, can't remember what she's I think she's in, is she in The Stealer of Marble? Possibly. It's, it's mm. the, uh, um, the, the firm, isn't it? The money mm. firm. Yes. Um, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's she's where the secretary. He, that's where he first yeah. meets her. Yeah. And then... Um, they they have a very interesting sort of yes court, um, sort of relationship courtship yeah you almost. you see how they sort of because yeah. he, he takes her out to things and yes. and, yeah. and then she ends up getting involved in in some, in some of the some schemes cases. doesn't she yeah yeah because yeah. although he is a bit older than her he's he's very much a gentleman yeah. and I think she likes that he, he treats her because that first episode I didn't know quite what to make of his character no. Because he does seem so bumbling, and mm. and he's got, as you say, he's got a mind like a steel trap. But but then oh. suddenly there's a scene in that first episode where you suddenly step back and you realise why all the criminals take him seriously. Yes. Because you wouldn't think they would at first. No. Mm. You think they they think he's an idiot, but mm -hmm. that isn't it? Is it John Bennett in? Um, yes. In, in the. Yeah. In in like the, almost the full uniform thing with like the pointy arrows on yeah almost it? yeah almost yeah and yeah. Uh, yeah he says that you know reader is to be taken seriously mm -hmm. and, and it certainly is so i'd love to see this get on talking pictures tv yeah, yeah come point. on talking pictures tv you're stalking us anyway keep yeah. putting stuff on there if we can. say it it'll happen yeah <laughs> Because it's happened with Callum this month, TV. Uh, uh, Callum the other month, and yeah, uh, yeah. and Van der Volk Van this Volk, month. So yeah. if we do, yeah. Mr. Reader, yes, look, look, right, just to show you again. Right. So there we are, Mr. Reader, starting on Talking T Pictures TV next At month, some point obviously, soon. yeah, because we've just said it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, do yourself a favour and, and get it. It's it, it's from Network. It is. And it's utterly brilliant. It is very good. And yes. I, I think I think you'll find a uh, Miss Parker that. Uh, mm. We have fulfilled our quota of minutes, so if okay. I can just ask you to press the appropriate button. Okay then. Goodbye. Bye.